So guys, it's Monkey Bacon here from Soft Monkey Development, and I'm refilming tutorial number 10 because I filmed it last night and I was really tired and it was really boring, but now we're going to get this done and I left this in here from last tutorial. Okay, so today we're going to be making our own menu and learning about game state. Now, we're going to start with game state. Game state is basically the state of what your game is in. For example, are you playing? Are you paused? Is the, In that case, would it be, is the game state playing? Is the game state paused? Is the game state menu or anything like that. Um, this is used so we can test what the game state is. So if the game state is playing, then draw the player. If that makes sense. It will in a second. We're going to make a new game uh, variable called game state. We're going to set it to a string called playing. All right. Now, we're going to test if game state equals equals playing then so now if the game state equals playing then we always do these two functions but if it's not then we don't do anything because there's nothing else to do uh, we're gonna do the same thing with player.draw so this ensures that these functions will only be happening you will only be drawing the player when you are playing not when you're at the menu not when you're paused all of that. But if you wanted to, there's also, instead of just typing then, you could type or game state equals paused then. But we obviously don't want to draw the player when the game state is paused. So I'm just going to type then. I will explain more about that or because there's ors, ands, and stuff like that because I don't think I explained that yet. Okay. Um, so now, these functions only occur when the game state equals playing. But, obviously, when you start up your game, you want to go straight to the main menu. Uh, in an advanced tutorial, I'll teach you guys about how to do like a startup and a loading screen and all that. Because when you start up your game, you want to like show your logo or your the name of the game and then go to the menu. Like fade in, fade out, all that. Okay. Uh, which is something I didn't do with zombie game. Okay, sorry. Get into second. So, we're going to set the game state to menu. Because that's obviously the first thing you want to go to is the menu. So... We are going to make a new file and call it menu.lua. Type it on my side tech. Okay. Now we have to require menu. We don't do the dot lua because love 0 .0, 0 .0, no, point, oh, 0 0.0 no point 0.8.0. It's awesome. Um Alrighty. We So we are going to cover a very advanced topic right now. That's why I kind of sped through the beginning of this tutorial because it's going to take a lot of time to explain this. We are going to be covering tables. Tables are a very large part of every type of game development. Um, okay, I haven't really planned out how I'm going to explain tables, but I'm going to explain it out in a way that hopefully makes sense. So let's get started. We're going to make a table called button. So to do that, we type button equals and then open curly bracket, close curly bracket. So, the table is empty. If you put something in here, the table would be full. But it's empty. We don't need anything in there right now. It's just empty. We're going to be filling it with button variables. And by that, I mean we're going to make a function. And it's going to be called button underscore spawn. And I'm just going to type in. And inside of these, in, uh, for the arguments, we're going to have x and then y and text. Now, that means when we use this function, we have to set those arguments to a number or a string. So obviously we'd set the text, the text of the button, to the string. And then the y of the button, we set it to a number, and the x of the uh, button, we set it to a number variable. So, what we're going to be doing with these arguments is inserting them into the table button. Now, to do that, we type table.insert and then open parentheses, and then type the table you want to insert stuff into, which is, in this case, button, comma, space, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, close parentheses. Now, this should all not look too confusing, but it should look very unfamiliar. Inside of these curly brackets is what we are inserting into the table button. In this case, we are going to be setting these variables, which we're going to set when we use this function, to variables inside of the table button. So, to do this, we type x equals x, y equals y, and text equals text. 
Now, one thing about inserting variables or anything into a table is that if you do it too much, you, the game will get really laggy and slow. And by that I mean don't insert a table inside of love.update because it'll insert the table just continuously over and over and over again until eventually everything just shuts down. <laughs> so what we're going to do is insert it inside, we're going to use this function inside of love.load instead of love.update because if we use it in love.update it will be inserting it into the table every single frame. We do not want that at all. So I'm going to do a comment and say buttons just so I know that these are the buttons. Do button underscore spawn and what's the x going to be? My x is going to be 5 and then the y's for me is going to be 200 and the text is going to be start. So this is clearly the start button. Um, in tutor uh, tables are, like I said, a very advanced topic, but they are definitely important. You're going to use them with enemies. Uh, you could use them with players if you're doing multiplayer. I'll explain that in an advanced tutorial. Uh, bullets, all of that stuff. And obviously, here, we're using them for buttons. Uh, if you do not completely understand tables yet, give it... Uh, you should probably give me until the next tutorial to try and redeem myself. But if I can't explain it, then try asking around in the Love2D forums. And if you find a good ex explanation of a table, be sure to post it as a comment or message me and I'll put it in a video. Uh, so yeah, I hope this helped. In the next tutorial, we are going to be drawing the buttons. Because so far, all we've done is set variables inside of the table button. But we haven't used those variables. And I really hope this all makes sense. I know it's, tables is a really hard concept to grasp. But it's been Monkey Bacon. Like, favorite, comment, subscribe. Please tell your friends if they've ever wanted to make a game to come check out my channel. And uh, yeah, I hope this helped.